Okay, we work on a couple of examples related to statically indetermined uh, beams. So in this case, uh, I do have one horizontal beam that cross from D, E, F. And then we apply the force of 50 kilonewton and 80 kilonewton. In a static, you have only one equation. Sum of f of y, actually you have two equations. Sum of f of y equal to zero and sum of moment. But how many unknowns you have? You don't know the first, uh, the force that in A, D, B, E, and C, F. Okay, I'm going to call that F, D, F, E, and F, F. You can see I draw the diagram. In the diagram, I have uh, three forces that they are uh, forces from those links or bars. Then two forces are going down. So sum of f of y is very easy. So you're going to have f d plus f e plus f f. So this three minus fifty minus eighty equal to zero. The second one I have is uh, again you can end up as f d plus f b plus f f is one thirty. I do a moment about point D. When I do a moment about point D, I have 50. The distance for that is 1. It's going to go clockwise about point D. Remember that when we do moment, we consider the direction of the rotation. So for 80, for 80, the force also is clockwise, clockwise. For those three up here, uh, again, we do moment about point D. There will be no moment from this. But the moment that's come from uh, Fe, Ff, those two moments will be counterclockwise. So that's why I use positive for those two. Fe times 2, uh, minus 50 times 1, minus 80 times 3, plus Ff times 4. That distance is 4 meter. You get your third equation. So you have three equations, three unknowns. We start solving them. <coughs> Again, you can use substitution method. <coughs> Again, if I... Again, sorry, sorry, I have only two unknowns, two equations so far. I'm, not, I'm going too fast. So I have one equation for sum of moment about D, one equation for sum of F of Y. So the third equation is coming from mechanics of materials. It's about elongation. Because we have the bar there, that bar will, will, will push them to move linearly, right? So those three, they have to move linearly. Otherwise, uh, they would buckle, they will bend, but again, in this case, I'm applying a force gradually. So those three wires, depending on where I have a more force, it becomes elongated more. These three wires, they are all made on the same of the same materials. So I'm going to go to the table, look up the E for them, how much the E for that material is. The diameter is given to me, the actual area is given to me at 450 millimeter square. That's a good news. So the shape that I draw here helps us a lot. So remember that if we apply a force here, the delta F, delta E, and delta D, they will have such a geometric relationship with each other, which we draw it here. Out of that geometry, uh, what you could see, you could see, for instance, delta, just look at the triangle at the bottom, which is going to be, we, we're going to talk about similarity between triangle between those two. The little triangle, on the little triangle, one side is delta E minus delta D. And then the other side is delta F minus delta D. That's for the bigger triangle. The length of the bigger triangle is 4 on, on the top, like one side of it. And one side of it is 2. I'm going to go with similarity between triangles. And then I found this amazing relationship. So from this relationship, I'm going to substitute delta with F L over A E. Then once you substitute with F L over A D, I'm going to find my third equation. So the third equation I found was F A. Again, remember A E was the same for all of them. The area, the E was the same. They all cross off. So I don't need to be worried about it. For L, the, the, the initial length for all of them was 2. They will cross off from each other as well. Then I would get into equation and then my third equation would be uh, FF plus FD minus 2 FE is equal to 0. So that's my third equation. So which I, which I draw, which I wrote it here. So the third equation I found was this. I have two more equations. One equation from uh, sum of moment and one equation from sum of f of y. So 
this equation is coming from this equation is coming from sum of moment this equation is coming from sum of f of y equal to 0 and that equation is coming from the geometry um, related to uh, the object so again geometry applying all those delta a f l over a e we simplify it now we get to these three unknown three equation we're going to solve those three unknown three equation again in this case i use the substitution method i found the f e in terms of f f i put it in there found one equation there one equation at the bottom and then i solve for those three unknowns so the three unknowns i found was FF as 50 kilonewton, FD as 35, and FE as 43. Question asked me to find sigma. It's a piece of cake, right? You already know A. Uh, then we need to convert the A from millimeter to meter. But remember, this is millimeter square. So that's why a thousand millimeter here, I raise it to the power of two down there. So uh, you can similarly calculate sigma for D and e so again I, I put the values for one of them similarly you can do for the rest of them so now we want to make the problem a little bit more interesting we know delta is coming from force when you apply force you get elongation you get compression but can come from the temperature too right when you raise the temperature the object expand and that's what we call it thermal expansion for thermal expansion the equation is not like a, a crazy equation is just a very linear equation delta of t the elongation due to thermal is initial length alpha is the coefficient of heat expansion some material tend to expand a lot when they become heated like for instance copper they expand much more when heated compared to steel and then this is actually this is the character we use in many of thermostats like i'm talking about mechanical thermostat that they click so those clicking on mechanical thermostat is actually due to different materials or twisted together and then um, still we are using it you know or kettles uh, that, that types of thermostat because they have two material with different coefficient of thermal expansion and then we have the delta t which is changing temperature if the delta t is positive elongation become positive otherwise if the delta t is negative you get shrink in the size now in this example I want to use the same example I talk on the top uh, but uh, actually I talk in the other video I want to use that along with the thermal expansion so what's happening in this case I have two material I have brass in one side aluminum in the other side um, what we have here again if you raise the temperature for this if the T1 and then we actually raise the temperature to T2 of 100 again we raise the temperature from 50 to 120 Fahrenheit the question asks us how much the color will be displaced it's playing a trick on us and also how much would be uh, the force that develop in each of this which will be translated to uh, normal stress so the way that we're gonna work on this problem is that uh, I know when when we when we have elongation in this case we're going to have a force develop right again remember when you raise the temperature the force will be created the comp uh, the f because they become elongated brass become elongated more and then uh, aluminum elongated less i'm just guessing i need to go back to the um, the sheet for their actually their characteristic and i already your, you may already have that like you can go to there and then check e of aluminum is 10.6 uh, times 10 to the power of 6 they give me what types of uh, aluminum is that and then for the brass the e is e of the brass is 14.6 uh, the elongation for it is 0, 0. Um, actually in this case you can see the aluminum become elongated more than the brass because alpha is larger for aluminum than brass but uh, the E for aluminum is less than the brass so based on the force that thing because so we have we have to account for both of them so basically the, the in, in, in such type of problem I can say sum of delta T plus sum of delta F is equal to the gap 
if you have a gap. In this case, I don't have a gap. The gap is zero. So whatever the change in delta in temperature, the delta in the force, they will cancel out each other. They become zero. For instance, if you have elongation due to the temperature, where that thing goes, right? We know that when you heat up something, it become expanded, it become longer. So what is happening is that due to that force, it shrinks, it become compressed. So you develop a stress inside that. And that stress is the noise that you hear on your, when you turn on your furnace, right? In winter, you can hear that cracks. And that crack is coming because you increase the force, the force translated create a crack on, on the force. And that force create that noise. So um, what I do know, I do know that if the force that developed for aluminum and brass is the same force, right? Because if you do sum of f of x, you can see fa is equal to fc. So basically f everywhere is the same. I have the same force that applied to brass, the same force applies to aluminum. Then I'm going to write this equation that the sum of delta t plus sum of delta f is equal to zero. Okay, we put the, all the variables there, L of brass, alpha of brass, delta T, plus L, L of aluminum, alpha of aluminum, delta T. Again, we have the same F, the same force for both, so I'm going to just call it F. Length of aluminum over A of brass, sorry, um, F, L the brass, A, E of the brass, and then the second equation is for aluminum. I use the negative for both because I believe there's going to be shrink. They will be compressed. Both of them will be compressed. So that's why I use a negative sign for both here. So we put all those equations there. And then after we got our solution, you can find how much the F is. So the force that develop is 16.8 kip. That's the force developed for aluminum and the brass. The question asked me to find average normal stress. So the, uh, the cross-sectional area for each of the member is 1.1775 inches square. By the way, you need to solve, you put all the things in there, simplify it to calculate for F. I'm not going to go over all those calculations, but you can actually read through it and see how that thing has been done. So you found the force. Now you have the force, you want to find the sigma. That's going to be an easy part. So sigma is equal to F over A. And then F is 16.8 divided by the area, which is 1.75. Again, this was kip, kilo, pound. And then down here, I had the inch square. So the answer is 16.8 divided by 1.75. This will give me the answer of 9.6 KSI, right? <laughs> which is kilo PSI. Okay, thank you very much for uh, watching this video as well.